How to create an abstract bouncing ball animation effect in DaVinci Resolve 19.1.3. Inside your project edit window, go to Effects. Underneath Toolbox, select Effects. Go to click and drag a Fusion Composition clip to your edit timeline. The default duration of this clip is 5 seconds. In order to modify this duration, with the clip selected, hold in Ctrl or Command if you're a Mac user and press D to change the duration. Here in this example I will select the 15 second preset. The two zeros to the right of the 15 determine the number of frames that make up each second of screen time. Click change when you're done. According to the clip attributes of the timeline, which can be accessed by clicking once on the eye icon in the bottom right corner of the timeline thumbnail in the media pool master bin, we can see from the frame rate property that 24 frames make up each second of screen time. We can use this information to determine the number of frames that make up each segment of this animation effect later on in this tutorial. Right click on your Fusion Composition clip and go to Open in Fusion page. Inside your Fusion Nodes panel, select an ellipse tool. Then go to click on the background node which we can use to change the colour of our bouncing ball. Click on the grey box alongside ellipse 1 and drag your mouse cursor to the blue arrow alongside background 1 to make a connection. Finally connect background 1 to media out 1 to add the ellipse shape to your video clip. Select either the left or right view underneath media out 1 to see a preview of your final effect in the window above your fusion timeline. With the background node selected, go to inspector and underneath colour, choose the type of colour shade that you wish to apply. Choose solid colour for a single shade. Multiple colour options are available from horizontal, vertical, four corner and gradient. In this particular example I will stick with solid colour. To change the colour of the ball, double click on the box next to colour and select your desired shade from the colour window. Here in this example I will select a turquoise preset from the basic colours options. The hexadecimal code for this particular shade is hash 00FFFF. Click OK once you've chosen your colour. Now to create the animation effect, go to select ellipse 1. Adjust width and height to change the size of the ball. Here in this example I will apply the value 0.1 to the width and height of this bouncing ball. Now ensure that the pointer on your fusion timeline is positioned at the very start of your animation clip. Here in this example it will be frame 0. The bouncing ball will start in a compressed position at the bottom of the canvas in this example animation clip. To move the ball downwards, decrease the value for center Y. Here in this example I will decrease its value to 0.05. As a result of this adjustment, a quarter of the bouncing ball has disappeared off canvas. In order to ensure that the whole ball remains on canvas and appears in a compressed state, I will first widen the ball by adjusting the width value, here in this example, to 0.15. And to bring the bottom quarter of the ball up so it appears at the bottom of the canvas, I will decrease the height value, here to 0.05. In order to create the animation effect, we must advance forward on the fusion timeline and make further adjustments to these three properties. In order to create the bouncing transition, we must therefore also insert keyframes, which will help determine the state of the bouncing ball in each part of the animation sequence, and will also enable us to apply a looping effect later on in this tutorial. Click on the diamond icons alongside center, width and height, under controls in inspector. I will now advance forward by just under a quarter of a second of screen time to frame four where I intend for the bouncing ball to revert back to its normal size of 0.1 for both the height and the width. Adjust the properties appropriately. Do not worry if the bottom half of the bouncing ball appears off screen again, as we will make an adjustment to the center Y property later on in the timeline to make it appear that the bouncing ball is in mid-air at this point of the animation sequence. Know how keyframes are automatically applied to the width and height properties. I will now advance forward by roughly two thirds of a second to frame 17 and will adjust the center Y value here to 0.7 which will be the maximum height that the bouncing ball reaches in this animation sequence. To ensure that there is consistency in the size dimensions of the bouncing ball, ensure that the width and height keyframe diamond icons are selected also. We should now have an animation sequence which begins with the bouncing ball decompressing before rising up to its maximum point center Y 0.7. What we need to do now is to apply a reverse effect so that the ball goes back down into a compressed state as it was at the start of the animation sequence before applying a looping effect so that this animation sequence repeats 
regardless of how long your fusion composition clip is. In order to apply this repetition, select Spline, go back to frame 0 on your timeline, tick Ellipse 1 which appears next to the spline graph, to display lines which demonstrate the changes to values we have applied to properties with keyframe attributes. Adjust the grey circular buttons above your graph if you cannot see these. In order to have the bouncing ball slow down as it reaches its highest point, we need to add curvature to the line which represents the centre path. In order to apply this ease out effect where the ball slows down as it reaches its highest point, first untick width and height by double clicking in each box. Click and highlight a diagonal line which appears which represents the change in the Y value for centre. With now just the centre path line selected, select the smooth option which will enable us to add curvature to this line. Click and drag the line halfway between both of the nodes represented with the padlock symbol so that there is a steepness in the first half meaning that the ball will bounce up quickly before the line curves off into an almost horizontal state which means that the ball will slow down before it reaches its highest point. You should see another keyframe appearing on your Fusion timeline. If we go to this point on frame 9, we can see that the keyframe is applied to the center Y property. Here in this example it will be 0.531. And if we play our animation from the start again, we can see that there is a decrease in the speed in which the bouncing ball moves as it reaches its highest point now. Now in order to create the segment where the bouncing ball falls back down to its compressed state again, ensure that all boxes are ticked next to the spline graph. Click and highlight the entire curvature shape which appears on your spline graph. Then click on the set ping pong option which appears below your graph. And now back in the edits window we can see that the fusion composition clip displays the repeated bouncing ball effect regardless of how long the fusion composition clip is. The black background also represents transparency, meaning that you can use this bouncing ball video clip in front of other videos and images in your project. Thank you very much for watching, I hope that video is useful to you. If you enjoyed the content and wish to be notified about future uploads on this channel, please like, share and subscribe. Join me soon for another video, take care.